Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So let's continue our epidemiological sessions that is epidemiology of uh, dental caries we covered already and its prevention. Now we have epidemiology of periodontal diseases and its prevention. So the prevention is basically uh, focusing on the plaque control that I'll be doing in my next video. So let's see what is epidemiology of periodontal diseases. So periodontal diseases like uh, we can say that it is periodontitis is an inflammatory disease of the supporting tissue. So we know what are the supporting tissues like uh, gums and other uh, gingival elements. Uh, there will be inflammation. Uh, which is caused by specific microorganisms or a group of microorganisms which results in progressive destruction of the periodontal ligament and alveolar bone. So these are the supporting structures which results in pocket formation and recession. Okay, So that is periodontal disease or periodontitis. So we have this epidemiological tract just like what we seen in our dental caries. So we have agent factors, host and environment factors. So host factors are race, age, sex, intraoral variations, habits, uh, occupational habits, uh, presence of concomitant diseases and other oral hygiene habits. Environmental factors are geographic area, nutrition, urbanization and educational background. In agent factors, material alba black capillus and stains so let's see uh, a survey of uh, India that is national oral health survey which was done in 2002-03 so that survey showed that uh, it was around 57 percentage of people in the age group of 12 and 68 percentage in age group of 15 almost 90 percentage in this age group that is 35 to 44 and 80 percentage in this group are having periodontal diseases that is periodontitis so periodontitis usually increases with age so let's see what are the host factors of this disease host factors the first one is racial differences so racial differences if you see African and Latin American background suffer from highest risk of periodontal tissue than the whites. But the main problem is that they belong to the low socioeconomic status. It is not the racial characteristics which causing this difference. It is why because these minorities are belong to low socioeconomic status. So it could be the affordability to maintain a good oral hygiene and other factors uh, contributing. To this uh, difference not the racial um, characteristics second one is age we know uh, periodontitis is a disease of old age but there are uh, uh, certain diseases which can seen in early age also like uh, um, aggressive periodontitis so commonly attachment loss and pocketing increases with age older age have chronic periodontitis and like i said juvenile periodontitis are also there and very early age you may see pre pivotal periodontitis so depending upon age the various uh, diseases are there but still it is a uh, disease increases with age so what happens is there are two mechanisms uh, with regard to age uh, it might increase um, uh, by itself due to cumulative effect of risk factors over time uh, that is uh, as the age increases there will be deterioration of host uh, defense mechanism there will be more susceptibility to infection and less salivary flow and it could be due to the cumulative uh, cumulative effect over time like multiple illustrations calculation calculus deep pockets teeth and focation involvement root caries which increases more plaque accumulation more plaque means more bacteria it causes periodontal disease so it could be one of these due to cumulative effect or due to the uh, age itself 
Regarding sex, gingivitis is more common in male than female and it has higher odds. Studies have shown that males are having more periodontal uh, problems compared to females. The dental caries was exactly opposite what we have seen and the reasons also we had seen like more hormone changes like phoneness and early eruption of teeth. So it could be due to estrogen has an effect in uh, protecting the supporting structures um, uh, for especially in the females. But what happens after the menopause? Uh, the studies have shown that there is no much difference between male and female since the estrogen effect uh, is um, uh, out of the question, uh, out of the context uh, once the menopause uh, starts. So. Uh, estrogen effect uh, can explain the better uh, periodontal health in females and most uh, also there is a lot uh, better oral hygiene uh, practices by the females and better utilization by the females because they are more aesthetically concerned and uh, uh, tobacco usage is very common among men compared to females. So all these can contribute to the gender difference of periodontal disease. Genetics like aggressive periodontitis can be uh, explained by genetics. It is an autosomal dominant uh, disorder. So anatomical factors like uh, poor cusp anatomy, uneven marginal ridges, lack of contact between teeth and crowding, which can lead to food impaction and accumulation thereby gingival irritation which ultimately leads to gingivitis and periodontitis. So the other systemic or concomitant diseases uh, is, uh, is having a very significant effect on uh, our periodontal structures uh, which uh, causes altering in the host tissue reducing the host defense mechanism. So there will be uh, changes uh, with related to HIV AIDS because it reduces the immunity of a person and there will be poor oral hygiene status and they are very vulnerable to periodontal diseases. So in HIV patients uh, commonly see an acrotizing periodontitis. So diabetes is like a very common uh, cause for the periodontal uh, uh, problems in uh, most of the people that is it is the sixth complication of diabetes mellitus so there will be uh, increased tendency of gingival enlargement polyps multiple abscess formation bone loss and pockets with regard to uncontrolled diabetes so it can cause uh, periodontitis by altering the periodontal response to local factors so there will be Mm, hyperglycemia causing protein molecules to undergo non-enzymatic glycosylation thereby forms uh, glycation end products so there will be uh, cross-linking of collagen affecting its renewal through which cellular migration is impeded so actually it affects the collagen and there will be uh, bone loss and uh, tooth loss so periodontitis uh, is a biggest problem the most of the diabetic patients face because it affects all these products and causes uh, it affects the collagen collagen is the main fiber which causes anchorage so collagen is affected so there will be uh, loss of uh, anchorage and tooth might be loose and there will be uh, other problems for the periodontal structures so osteoporosis is also Mm, a risk factor for periodontitis disabled people why because they are uh, having limited capacity to uh, do a proper oral hygiene measures or personal hygiene so which can contribute to mm, periodontal diseases so stress like it causes behavioral change they'll be overeating and smoking at the same time they maintain very poor hygiene uh, poor compliance and bacterial infection like cortisol all leads to periodontal disease. This is like a web of causation, what we learned in concept of causation. So stress can cause periodontal disease. 
so habits like occupational habits we have holding of nails in mouth like for carpenters and tailors and other musical instruments which is detrimental to our periodontal structures so nail biting finger nails toothpicks uh, lip biting all are um, periodontal periodontal structures uh, damaging or cause structure structural damage to periodontia local irritants such as mechanical irritant faulty toothbrushing or faulty restorations and orthodontic treatment all can cause damages to our supporting structures and local irritants like if we have a mouth opening habit so there will be dehydration of this mucous membrane decreased tissue resistance and gingival enlargement and there will be inflammation smoking is one of the biggest uh, factor which causes periodontal disease it has proven in many of many of the uh, researchers like one study has proven five times higher uh, periodontal diseases in smokers compared to non-smokers so most of the studies has uh, mm, proven this uh, smoking and uh, periodontal disease and causal link so alcohol consumption also has a bad effect on our periodontal structures because it impairs neutrophil macrophage and other uh, inflammatory functions and there will be more chances for the infection so we'll come to the agent factor the most common is material alba and dental plaque material alba is nothing but the accumulation of bacteria discommitted epithelial cells leukocytes and salivary proteins it lacks a organic structure that is the difference between dental plaque there is no organic structure but the dental plaque is a structured resilient yellow gray substance that adheres tenaciously to the intraoral hard surfaces so there will be a structured uh, property in dental plaque which is uh, lacking in material alba so plaque is composed of bacteria glycoproteins and extracellular polysaccharides it is because of this matrix the plaque cannot be removed by rinsing because it will be strongly firmly adhered to the two surfaces it has to be removed by proper brushing or uh, scaling normal rinsing cannot remove the plaque what uh, it removes is oral debris so we need to learn two hypotheses that is plaque hypothesis uh, non-specific plaque hypothesis says the periodontal disease results from the noxious products of the entire plaque flora they are not highlighting any specific bacteria so it says that larger amount of plaque and its accumulation is necessary for onset of periodontal disease this theory was discarded because some individuals with considerable amount of plaque calculus and gingivitis do not develop a destructive periodontitis but individuals with periodontitis show site specifically with some areas unaffected and some site showing advanced disease so this hypothesis are not able to prove or not able to explain these two scenario so specific plaque hypothesis by Lausche came into existence this theory states that only certain plaque is pathogenic and its pathogenicity depends upon the presence or increase in the specific microorganism not all pathogens are dangerous only few are dangerous and its presence or increase in specific microorganism can cause disease so marsh in 1991 formed ecological plaque hypothesis and proposed that a change in key environmental factors will trigger a shift in the balance of the resident plaque microflora so there will be always microflora in the mouth some are beneficial most of them are not beneficial so if the balance is disrupted the problem starts so calculus we know the heart deposits formed by the mineralization of dental plaque there is supragingival and subgingival calculus so supragingival uh, is mostly collecting its uh, minerals from the saliva whereas subgingival collecting it from the gcf So etiological significance is there is a positive relation between the presence of calculus and prevalence of gingivitis. So dental stains, we know extrinsic stain and intrinsic stain. 
extrinsic strain is like tobacco strain and intrinsic strain like tetracycline and dental fluorosis so agent factors like all these are the agent factors the various bacteria, actinomyces streptococcus uh, trypanema a fusobacterium and actinomyces actinobacillus actinomycetin comitants is for the juvenile parodontitis so all these are the agent factors now let's see what are the uh, environmental factors So geographical areas, uh, the scientist Russell summarized from his experience, like uh, which are high among countries like India, Thailand, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and uh, low among USA and uh, Eskimos of Alaska. So nutrition, if there is vitamin deficiency, protein starvation, and uh, calcium phosphorus magnesium deficiency and there will be uh, more of perinatal diseases so fluoride presence is inversely proportional to diseases and degree of urbanization education and income education is definitely will improve the patient's oral health and it is inversely proportional to the disease and um deteriorating habit which is common among a uh, low socio-economic group so that type of habits uh, are uh, predisposing to the periodontal disease which are common among low socio-economic strata and uh, some cultural factors and beliefs uh, all also important prevention of periodontal disease uh, is by plaque control that I'll be explaining you in my next video. So let's see how do we prevent uh, a plaque uh, control formation or periodontal disease under three level because this is we already seen levels of prevention and modes of intervention. How do we apply this? Primary, secondary, tertiary. Primary we have health promotion, specific protection, early diagnosis and prompt treatment, disability limitation and rehabilitation. Levels of prevention we have at individual level, community level and dental professional level. So under primary we have to um, do visit and uh, education by the community and education by the professional. In specific protection we have to remove the um, avoidance or proper oral hygiene practices. By the community we have to conduct school uh, brushing programs or oral hygiene aids distribution. By the dental professional, they can uh, help us by removing plaque control like or uh, scaling, correction of malaline teeth and prophylaxis. Under secondary, the disease is just beginning, so self-examination and visiting a dentist, periodic screening by the community, and by the professional, what he can do is scaling, curatage, restorative and occlusal services. Tertiary is already uh, caused the damage. So disability limitation, what uh, the dentist can give is deep curatage, root planing, periodontal surgery and splinting. Rehabilitation, uh, here uh, just visiting a dentist that is under individual and community. But dental professional, we can give removable or partial denture. So that's all about uh, periodontal disease epidemiology. So just like dental caries, we have agent, host and environmental factors. The main thing is the hypothesis, plaque hypothesis, non-specific, specific and ecological hypothesis and uh, various factors which are involved. So the next video I'll be explaining about the prevention. So prevention various levels we have seen. So under primary prevention, we have this plaque control measures, mechanical and chemical. So next video is of plaque control. Okay, thank you.